when you're ready. My investigative question examines how belonging to a human community affects an individual's ability to be resilient. Humans, as inherently social beings, seek connection and thrive off of social interaction. An individual's actions can be influenced by their communication with others, putting collaboration at the core, at the core of human life and society. This human interrelation allows communities to be established and individuals to belong to multiple groups simultaneously. Belonging to a group that is larger and more dynamic than oneself creates opportunities for personal growth, especially in developing fortitude through hardship. Being involved in a human community allows an individual to engage in the sharing of knowledge, capitalize on the potential of their environment, and thrive off of social connectivity, all of which enhance their resilience. Because trauma is an unavoidable component of human life, one must rely on the intelligence and stability of their community to stimulate their determination. As stated by Stephen Southwick, humans are embedded in multiple diverse social systems, ranging from the family unit to global solidarity, and can use the support of these communities to generate resilience or adaptability when challenged in themselves. Varying levels of understanding and intelligence within a community empower the stronger ones to raise up the weaker ones, allowing, allowing both to become stronger in the process. Just as Nelson Mandela and his imprisoned peers relied upon each other's strengths to, sur to survive, less experienced individuals can rely upon the strength and knowledge of the more mature in their community. When the more, when the more experienced individuals can share their strategies, the community's overall resilience and ability to defend itself is strengthened. An individual can then take this joint knowledge and apply it to their personal lives by remembering survival tactics and adaptation techniques that they would lack without community involvement. The support generated within an organization can also improve its capacity to handle and respond to traumatic events. By understanding the authority's intentions and distributing that information throughout the community, Mandela and his peers could understand the difficulties they were up against and increase their persistence. Nelson Mandela proves this idea in his statement that, the authority's greatest mistake was keeping us, or the prisoners, together, for together our determination was reinforced. The empowerment Mandela felt as a result of, of, of collaborating with other confined individuals emphasizes the strength of their unity and affirms that belonging to a human community enriches one's mental and physical strength. Communities and the individuals that they consist of can benefit from capitalizing on their environment and using its resources to their advantage. For example, in preparation for fierce flooding and violent cyclones in the Philippines, Individuals and their families either created flood and typhoon, resi typhoon resilient houses or reinforced their homes to make them more resilient. In this instance, the Filipino homes served as the environment and citizens made adjustments to this environment to preserve their safety and security. The mutual relationship between environmental and human success is reiterated by Marcus Aurelius Antonius. In his, in his meditations, the emperor writes, consider this universe as one living being, as all things are connected and intertwined. This statement supports the idea that individuals of a given community are in relationship with not only each other, but the environment. Given that the universe works as a united force, it is essential for communities to thoughtfully invest in and strengthen their environment to survive and remain resilient. In addition to modifying their homes, the Filipino citizens built walls along the coastline to defend their crops against harsh flooding. Nelson Mandela exhibited this same instinctive and defensive behavior by creating bonds with, other prison, with the other prison inhabitants, using his relationships as motivation to be released from prison in a sane mental state. He declared that the first task in accomplishing that, or being discharged from prison intact, was learning exactly what one must do to survive. In understanding the tendencies of floods and making physical changes to their environment, the Filipinos were better preparing themselves for environmental adversity. By distributing knowledge of flood tendencies, each citizen could modify the landscape accordingly, which protected their safety and well-being in the face of flooding. A community's ability to be resilient coincides with its level of social connectedness. The more involved members are in each other's lives, the stronger their relationship and ability to empathize. As stated by the National Preparedness and Response Science Board, when members of a community have a mutual understanding of beliefs, they can better unite when threatened. While incarcerated, Nelson Mandela was able to remain strong through the mental barriers he faced, as he writes, for together, our determination was reinforced. Although each imprisoned individual was experiencing their own obstacles, they collaborated and could, in turn, feed off of each other. Using social connectedness as a platform to share advice, the convicts could multiply whatever courage they had individually. 
In isolation, an individual is comparable to a small flame, as it possesses the potential to flourish, but needs a spark to reach its full potential. When multiple small flames unite and are fueled by each other, they emerge as one, as a great blaze. Likewise, when individuals are brought together and stimulated by working together, they rise as a lively community. Social connectivity and trust within a community produce a collaborative environment for, for resources, both tangible and intangible, to be shared. Learning from human beings with diverse backgrounds builds, builds resilience in an individual, as exposure to multiple perspectives helps one examine an attitude or choice they might not have considered on their own. Although the sharing of knowledge and the power of social connectivity are beneficial amenities a community can provide an individual, it is possible for one to feel more effective on their own. A compelling advantage of approaching a challenge alone is that the decisions are theirs to make. They have control over what they do and the order in which they do it. When an individual is the only one approaching a situation, they have absolute power to decide how they want to move forward. When one isn't burdened by conflicting viewpoints, they can act effectively as the differences of opinion in a community setting could decrease timeliness and disrupt social unity. Additionally, developing a skill on one's own can help them focus on tasks that are beneficial for them. Not operating in a community setting allows one to focus on their weaknesses instead of balancing the needs of the entire community. This generates more time to focus and deeply concentrate on learning a new skill or improving one's existing ones. Time dedicated to stimulating personal development helps an individual improve their adapt adaptability and become more immune to insignificant everyday pressures. Despite the, despite the potential for personal skill development and increased productivity that facing adversity alone provides, ultimately, an individual builds more resilience working in a community than alone. Communities are characterized by social interactions and the exchange of intelligence between parties, both of which are far more beneficial than burdensome. Every human being exists in a system of interdependence, which can be illustrated by a concentric circle model. This diagram makes it visually evident that each level of society is embedded in something larger than itself. An individual, symbolized by the innermost circle, belongs to and is affected by the community it's surrounded by. That community, in turn, depends on the resources and capability of a larger organization, and that larger organization relies, on the, relies upon the next highest level of oversight for support. Individuals in each size of community cultivate resilience by belonging to and benefiting from the unique qualities of the organization's higher and bigger than itself. This model of interdependence is reaffirmed in Emperor Mar Marcus Aurelius Antonius' meditation, all things are connected and intertwined, as all societal components are part of a whole. The connected nature of a community and provides a collaborative environment that fosters individual resilience through the sharing of knowledge, learning to manipulate one's environment, and consistent social connection. Thank you, Rana. <clears throat> um, how did preliminary information you gathered inform your research? Preliminary information from the stimulus materials, specifically Nelson Mandela's Long Walk to Freedom and the Meditations of the Emperor, served as the foundation for my research question. In thoroughly examining these two materials, I located recurring themes of existing as part of a whole and benefiting from being a part of something larger than oneself. These themes led me to focus my research on human communities and how an individual can become more resilient by existing in and interacting with their respective community. Thank you. What are the implications of your findings to the community? My findings indicate to my community that all individuals exist in a system of interdependence and can use the resources of others to improve their own capabilities or expand their knowledge. The collaborative environment of a human community encourages the sharing of strength and promotes social connectivity. When an individual is an active member of their community, they have access to various perspectives which can be beneficial to them when tasked with managing a decision or being faced with a challenge on their own. Thank you.